and generate them. My lab works on the cytoskeleton, that's the skeleton of the cell. The cytoskeleton is composed of microtubules uh, and actin filaments, and these are responsible for such important processes as cell division, cytokinesis, which is the dividing of the cell, and cell-to-cell -cell communication. And the only way of looking at these is by using confocal laser scanning microscopy. My research interests are very much in Arctic and Alpine systems and particularly in relation to climate change. Important because in these areas it's where climate change is going to happen the fastest and perhaps to the greatest extent. And so we're very interested in some of the species like these you can see here, which are very highly adapted to growing in upland environments or in the Arctic systems. And we're very interested in how, with warming of the climate, whether these things will survive, will they adapt or will they die out. Most of the work I do actually focuses on impacts of climate change on species. So I look at uh, the effects of climate change on birds and insects and look at how their populations change or how their ranges might shift in the future. Durham's probably one of the best places to come and study climate change and biology because we're surrounded by so many really beautiful areas. It's an amazing area to be and just to get out into the countryside and actually do work out in the field. And the work we are involved in is primarily to look at how plants respond to environmental stress because there's a problem with feeding the increase in population on the planet and one of the ways which we're hoping to be able to deal with this is to find out how plants are able to protect themselves under these conditions to improve crop yields. We have extensive facilities to measure very, very rapid and sensitive responses of plants in real time here. I'm very passionate about the work we do because we're facing an incredibly bad problem in the next 50 years trying to feed the planet. And I believe the research we're doing here in Durham will go some way to helping with that problem. Our work is based around skin and skin appendages, particularly hair follicles. We're particularly interested at the moment in their stem cells which we derive from skin and from hair follicles and which are the subject of a great deal of research at the moment. We have excellent cell culture facilities for growing the cells, extremely good links with clinicians um, and surrounding hospitals and these people are interested in actually using these cells eventually clinically for wound healing and skin repair. Our research is focused on trying to understand how plants grow and develop and in particular how genes are involved in controlling growth processes. And this is important because plants are essential for food and sustainable energy production. And if you want to improve crop varieties for food or energy, then you really need to understand the genetics of plant production. We have really the best possible facilities in order to carry out our research. One of the main things that we're interested in is the evolution of populations and, in particular, the mechanisms that generate diversity among populations. And for this we investigate a large number of different species, including marine mammals. And marine mammals are particularly interesting in this respect because in the oceans there are no obvious boundaries. But as it happens, their populations are highly divided. So we want to understand how that comes about. And one of the ways we do this is to consider their environment and how that changes over time. My research group is interested in a group of rare degenerative diseases which mimic normal aging. And the most severe example of that is, is hutchinson guilford progeria, in which children that are affected age approximately eight times faster than a normal individual. So that by the time they're about 13, they have the physiological condition of an 85-year-old. My research here really is to try and understand the process of aging. We do that by looking at genetic models of aging and trying to understand at a cellular level what goes wrong. My research interest is in the cytoskeleton and the way in which cells are shaped and why they adopt a particular form. So I'm interested in the way in which the cytoskeleton interacts with other components within the cell. But we've got world-class facilities in terms of microscopy, both electron and light microscopy, and those are very, very important facilities to be able to look at the filaments and the structures that they make inside the cells. You need microscopes with a lot of resolving power to be able to see these small structures. I did a three-year undergraduate course here in zoology 
and I've decided to stay on another year to do a master's by research. My research uses computer models to select reserves across Africa in the present day and also taking into account the effects of climate change on bird distributions in the future. We do research into how your brain regulates your cardiovascular system. And the reason for this is people who have heart disease, such as high blood pressure or have had heart attacks, they have abnormal control of their cardiovascular system, which is originating in the brain. Drug therapies at the moment target your heart and your blood vessels and can provide some sort of treatment to help people with cardiovascular disease. But what we're interested in is trying to develop new treatments which focus on the brain where the problem originates. Heart failure is, is one of the biggest killers in the world, so it's nice to know that, that ourselves in partnership with the British Heart Foundation are, are helping towards finding a cure. 